Your girl recently took a little trip down south and crossed the border and had a lovely little shopping day. And today I wanted to bring some of the products, throw them on my face and see how they uh, perform. I was about to say, see how they act. They could be act in a whole lot of ways, um, but we have a whole slew of products, new and not new, but mainly new to me that we're gonna put to the test today, my friends. I'm feeling slightly under the weather, so if we've gotta blow our nose, it's just gotta happen, my friends, but the day must go on and we must make ourselves feel excellent and extra fabulous and hopefully giving you some thoughts and opinions on some new products. So my friends, without further ado, let's zoom you in and put some makeup on this face. Now for the base today, one of the main products that I want to be putting to the test is the number seven Lift and Illuminate Powder because many of you over the years have told me that it is a dupe, where did I put it? For the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Now I believe this is my second one of this. That doesn't really matter, however. All that matters is that I'm obsessed with this powder and I love it and I do have a backup of this. So if we can find a more affordable alternative, that is a very exciting prospect. So because I wanna put this powder to the test today, I actually wanna start with my regular base, a go-to base. I feel like it would be unfair to try a new base product if I'm trying a new powder, you know? So we're just gonna to stick to what we know in order to properly put the number seven powder to the test. So I'm gonna start with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And I'm gonna take a lovely little knuckle of that and really throw that all over the skin and hydrate it and plump it up. Then let's go in with our beloved Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I'm using this one in the shade four, even though my tan hath faded. We'll just pretend and nicely bring that down the neck as well. So I'm spreading that out with my fingers first. And then I'm gonna take my Beauty Blender to blend that out. The one thing I've noticed about the Beauty Blender Pro in particular is that as it starts to age, <laughs> it starts to shed like little black spots. It's like almost these tiny micro little pieces of the sponge start shedding on your face and it's very bizarre. And that's usually when I know it's time to move on to another blender, but either way, just using the Beauty Blender <laughs> to blend out this foundation all over the skin. Do you see it there? Do you see the little speck? It's a little speck of sponge, and they just speck all over the face. Just gonna take that down the neck as well. And then going in with my NARS concealer, I have the shade Vanilla and Custard, and I'm going to use that to brighten and conceal the face. So I'm using Vanilla underneath the eyes and in the center, higher most, higher most, higher parts of the face to highlight and brighten. And then taking Custard, the deeper of the two, just to conceal any areas where we're wanting some more coverage. This is getting low. Whoa, baby. She's running out of juice. Might need a refill of her too. And then I'm also just gonna take the Beauty Blender to blend that out. Now, one thing that I did mention in the haul video was that I picked up some new Real Techniques brushes and I actually already tested out this base so that I could have some lovely opinions and full form thoughts for you. And when I was testing it out, I did actually, in fact, take the Real Techniques Seamless Complexion Brush and take that for a little testy test on the foundation. And I actually ended up going in with my Beauty Blender anyway because I just felt like it wasn't blending the foundation out enough. I felt like it did leave a lot of like brush strokes on my skin and in comparison to like my it cosmetics 102 is it the 102 brush it's just this one is so soft and the real techniques one was just a little bit more pokey in a way i felt like i would want to reserve this for like cream bronzer or cream blush even though i did also buy the blush version i just didn't love it if anything actually i think i'd prefer the blush one for foundation because it just is a little bit more fluffy i feel like it can blend out the product a little bit more so i didn't love the flat complexion brush just as a first impression and a first time using it so i just wanted to toss that out there that's the only reason why i'm not using it today even though they were a part of that video yeah i just feel like i like a little bit more of a full fluffier variety. So in order to test the powder out again today, I just wanted to stick to the Beauty Blender love and give us a flawless base to work with. Okay, before we do anything else, I'm trying to be better about doing my e.l.f. brow lift at this stage so that it has time to sit and set. So I'm just gonna take my brow lift and set in my brow hairs. And then normally I just do this all in one. I do my brows all in one step, but I've been trying to do this where I give it the time to sit and settle down and dry down so that I can use my brow products on top of it in a more effective way and giving it that time to set in and then also tossing some face powder onto them after. I feel like makes the brows, I think just has such a better effect for the brow products and I've been loving it and I've been doing it lately. I don't know if in the last few videos you guys have noticed a difference in my brows, but I definitely feel like my brow game has been 
strong and I think it's because I've been doing this. Like literally the things that everyone's been telling me to do for so long, <laughs> shocker, they've been working. So I'm putting brow lift in, loving this so, so much. And I'm gonna give that time to settle in. So while that does sit, I actually sneakily ran to Sephora after my little USA haul because I saw that Makeup by Mario launched these two beautiful new products. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector and the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. Really clever marketing here. I have actually taken these for a little test already because I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I stabbed a little nail in that as you do, my bad. But with all the fancy names and marketing set aside, in my opinion, this is basically just a cream bronzer and a powder bronzer. That being said, I do think the formula of the cream bronzer is very unique and I'm excited to show you guys. My biggest difference that I noticed with this in comparison to my other cream bronzers is that it's a much lighter formula. So products like my Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate, the Huda Beauty Tantor, the Nude Sticks Bondi Bay, those products that I use to contour and bronze my face so often and in my daily makeup, they're just a lot more pigmented. So they're really pigmented. You can really get that color payoff when you're blending them out. The biggest thing that I noticed with this is that it's a much, much more sheer formula. So it actually gives a really, really natural finish to the skin, which I love to go heavy handed with my cream products. This might not be something that I reach for all the time, but for that perfect glowing summer skin, it's so beautiful. And I just, I'm excited to show you guys. So I'm gonna start with the cream bronzer and Makeup by Mario also launched a double-ended brush to go with it, but I had recently picked up the lovely little It Cosmetics number no. seven brush. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm gonna dip it into the product. I got these both in the shade light medium. And I'm just gonna start by putting that on my face and you can see like how sheer, how sheer that is. It's not very pigmented. So you can really, really like apply a lot of product but it's so easy to blend out all over the skin. If you love a quick makeup and you don't wanna to have to fuss with a lot of blending, like this is such a dream and it really has that glowy finish. Like it's a matte product, but it's got that like built-in glow. And I'm just gonna do one side so you guys can see the difference. And also just using like a big fluffy brush like this just makes it so easy to apply. But that's the product applied on one side. Actually, let me just do my jawline here, sorry. It's so sheer, it just gives the most beautiful natural warmth and glow on the skin versus the other side. So if you really wanted to like chisel out the cheekbones, you can still go in with the contour products. Makeup by Mario still has his contour sticks. So this to me is very much like a very natural, warm, glowing bronzer that just, <laughs> it's really pretty. It's really pretty, honestly. I'm super curious to see how the deeper shades work on deeper skin tones. I saw one gal's TikTok and she was raving about it as well because I do think even if the color payoff isn't as intense, it does just give that really natural glow on the skin. That lovely little like wet sheen. It's very pretty. And I think for me, this is gonna be the most delightful like no makeup makeup skin product, especially during the summer if I'm not wanting to wear a lot of products on my skin. This is such a gorgeous natural option to have. And at first I was really skeptical because I was like, come on, this is just a cream bronzer. Like it's not that crazy. But the more videos I saw of it, the more I was like, oh, that looks really just lovely and natural and sheer and positively delightful for natural makeup. So that is the cream bronzer applied. What do you guys think? I think it gives off the most beautiful finish. And then next he has the Skin Perfector. And this is a little trio of products. And he just takes a big fluffy brush, twirls it all together and uses that to set the Skin Perfector and also add some glow. So again, to me, it's just like layering up another bronzer. When you swirl all the shades together, you're essentially left with like a nice glowy bronzer. But you could also use each of the layers individually if you wanted to amp up some color and definition in more places. But I'm just gonna take that. This is my Refero 5 brush. And I'm applying that on top of the cream product. Oh my gosh, I fully forgot to do my nose. Sorry, hold on. And going back to the small brush and taking the cream, whoops, down my nose. This is really pretty for nose contour, nose bronzer, especially if you're not good at the actual contour because it just looks so natural and blends out so nicely. <gasps> How could I have forgotten? Okay, good. We got that out of the way. So I find these layers in particular to have like quite a shimmer running through them. So you really do get that intense, nice glow on the skin, but there's no chunky bits. There's no chunky glitters. So if you really love to layer up your bronzers, these are truly so beautiful. I really hope that the finish is coming across on the camera, but also the fact that it just totally melts into the skin. They're honestly, they're really, really beautiful. I was skeptical, but I have to say that I'm quite 
impressed with these. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think? So now that we've got all our cream products sorted, we can go ahead and test the number seven, Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Finishing Powder. Your best looking skin, instantly smoother and more radiant. Lovely. I got this one in the shade Light. It's quite white white, but I was hoping that it would have a little bit more of a transparent feel. The first time I used this, I did find instantly that it had a lovely blurring effect, but it was just a little bit like just not even anything necessarily to comment on to like sway you from this powder, but I did notice that it was a little bit more dry feeling than my Charlotte Tilbury powder. I can pretty much like, like I have very, very dry skin and I can pretty much throw like pounds of this onto my face and be generally unaffected. I did feel a little bit more dry with this one, but we've got a really nice hydrating base on, so let's just give it a go. I'm gonna put it on one side of my face first. Someone did comment on my haul video that they changed the formula of this, so I was like, oh, I cannot confirm, but if that is true, then that's interesting to know. I'm just taking a nice big fluffy brush and applying that all on one side of the face. You can see it does have a really, really nice blurring effect. Having the shade that's a little bit lighter is also great for under the eyes to help kind of continue the brightening effect. And overall, I really do like the look of it. I think it's really nice. It does what it should. And it just really softens and blurs out that under eye. But again, all I'm saying is that it is just slightly more dry. Like I can slightly see a little bit of a buildup underneath my eyes that I don't get from my Charlotte Tilbury powder and also the Givenchy powder. It just has that really, really silky smooth look. This one, just like right under my under eyes, you can just see, I don't know, can you see the little fine, fine lines there? I'm doing the same process. I'm using my same base products and you can try to like press it and warm it with your finger, but obviously by look, it does look delicious. It's just a little bit more dry on the under eyes. That was my first impression of the number seven powder. For those of you who do have the info and the intel on whether or not they did reformulate this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously the powder is beautiful and if you don't have as dry skin as I do, you probably wouldn't even notice that and it does have a really gorgeous finish. So overall, I'm very much impressed. I like that it's lighter, so if I'm wanting to brighten up the under eyes, it's just slightly lighter than my Charlotte Tilbury one, so I can go for that one if I really wanna brighten it up. But maybe in the winter time, I wouldn't reach for something that is a little bit more drying. So I'll continue playing this over the next few weeks and definitely give you guys my final thoughts, but those are my initial impressions. If you guys are a fan of that product, please do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Just to give us some life to our lips really quickly, I'm gonna take my Makeup Forever Artist Pencil. This is the shade Wherever Walnut. I don't often like to stare at my naked lips while I'm doing my makeup. Sometimes it throws me off, so I'm just gonna put some liner on so that we can continue in peace with the rest of the makeup. Actually, while we're here, let's just go ahead and use that little Neutrogena Revitalizing Lip Balm. This one's the shade Petal Glow and it has SPF 20. I didn't realize when I opened it, it actually has a little bit of like glitter. So I was like, is this gonna be a shiny? Lip balm, it smells really nice. It just smells like sweet candy. I love the packaging. Really lovely and easy to just throw in your bag. And if you're wanting some SPF on your lips to just throw on throughout the day, but I figured we could put that on and let it like hydrate and settle in before we like do a lip look later. Or we might just wanna leave it like this, but it does have a little bit of a shimmer, but it's nice. It's like a really nice little mauve tone. I actually don't mind that. It goes really nicely with this lip liner. Oh my God, the smell is absolutely delicious. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and set in the base with my Benefit Professional Spray. Now that we've done the powder and we're glowing and the base is ready. Now next up, I wanna do the eyes, but before we do the eyes, I'm just gonna do my brows. This is my Benefit Micro Filling Brow Pen and I'm gonna use this to fill in the brows. And because we've given the e.l.f. brow lift time to set in, this just applies so beautifully on top and it's so easy and quick. Like this is the ultimate feathered brow look. And I have loved this pen in the past, but I had stopped using it because using these more thick products like the Anastasia Brow Freeze or this e.l.f. Brow Lift, like it wouldn't apply on top. So obviously like sitting here and letting it have the time to set properly makes all the difference. And now I can go back to my love for this because it just looks so good. Now I use that specifically on the inner bits of my brow, but then I still wanna go in with my brow pencil and I use that to just fill in the rest of the area because I just find it a lot easier, honestly, and faster just to fill in the sparse areas on the rest of my brow. And this is the Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade 4.5, the darker shade, you guys. We've learned so much this month. <laughs> Thank you, Jared, for the tip on the deeper shades for my brows in particular. All right, let's play with some new eye products, you guys. I wanted to test out the REM Beauty Liquid Eyeshadow. This one's the shade Heart, and this one's the shade Nevermind. Fun fact, I can't actually write the shade of this. The little bracket in the three, the classic old school 
text for heart uh, because you can't put those brackets in a YouTube description box. So I put heart. <laughs> so just know whenever you see that written, I'm talking about that shade of the little rem beauty liquid eyeshadow. So let's actually start with the shade heart. I kind of want to do this as a deeper little base all over. Love the packaging of this. I think it's very cute. I like that you can see the shade. This is a lovely light brown and I think it's going to be delicious as like a one and done eyeshadow and I'm excited to try it. So I'm just going to take a little brush and just blend that out all over the lid. You guys know I love to have my simple everyday shadows like this where you just don't have to think about it. You can literally throw on one shade and leave it. Wow, that's blending out so nicely. It's so creamy. And this warm brown, oh my God, for summer when you just want that all over glowing bronze warm look on the skin. <gasps> this is stunning. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that. I really want this to be an all over base for the eyeshadow that we're gonna put on next. So I'm just really diffusing that into the crease. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's such a pretty color. <gasps> I love I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush and just really softly blend that on top to make sure that there's no lines anywhere. And that is the shadow. Okay, I mean, first impression, that blended out stunningly. What a lovely, easy, easy shade. I'm gonna leave you for a sec and go ahead and do the other eye. Ah, cute, cute. I love, love. What do you guys think of this color? I feel like I can clean up this little, little bit right here, but that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out once we put the rest of the shadow on. But this was a product from REM Beauty that I was really excited to try. What do you guys think? Okay, I wanted to add a little bit more shadow on top of this. So I wanted to dip into that Jaclyn Cosmetics Lux Legacy Eyeshadow Palette. Now this is quite a pricey palette. It was $49 US. And when you convert that over to Canadian dollars, it's about $62 Canadian plus tax. That being said, it is a very large palette. You obviously get a lot of product in here. My one little, you know, sadness with this is it doesn't have a mirror. So when you have a palette this big and if you're like traveling with this, I'd really want to have a mirror with that to be able to use it. But otherwise I think the colors in here are really pretty. You get such a nice variety between the cool tones and the warm tones, some nice little pops of like earthy tone color and then a nice variety of your matte shades and their shimmer. So you really, like if you love neutral tones, I really was very excited to play with this and see what's up. So I'm gonna start with the shade Biscuit here. I'm actually just gonna put that on the brow bone just cause I kind of threw the cream eyeshadow all over. So I'm just gonna use that as a highlight here. I think because we've got quite a warm look, I'm actually just gonna take this Bad Mousy, Bad Mousy brown shade, and I'm just gonna place that onto the lash line and just really layer that up into the cream eyeshadow that we applied. Oh, it's quite deep, quite deep, woo Summer look, who? No ma'am, we're going full glam apparently. So I'm just placing that all on the lid and going right up to the crease. It's a really pretty brown. It's a little bit more cool tone, which I really love. I'm gonna take a fluffier brush and just go into that pudding girl and just run that on the crease to try and soften it up a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit muddy. I can't tell if it's like the cream shadow beneath it or the dark shadow on top, but it's definitely a little bit of a muddy look going on. So I'm just gonna try to like soften that up a little bit in the crease. these colors together are stunning. Now I'm gonna dip my finger into apple pie here, this lovely golden, golden shimmer, and I'm just gonna place that all on top. Ooh. It's a little bit harder to do that as your nails get longer <laughs> to like angle it sideways. I think the cream eyeshadow at the start was just a little bit muddy. I'm just seeing some muddiness on my eyes. So I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush and go into my bronzer and just like run that through the crease and try to tone it down a little bit. Just a big fluffy brush. I'm just gonna run that over and try to just soften up a bit of that muddy. Do you know what I mean when I say muddy? I feel like we've just got a little something something going on here. I feel like that helped a little bit. <laughs> Okay, next I wanna take that put in girl and just run that along the lower lash line. And then to finish off, I'm gonna take Bad Mousy and Because I Said So, I'm just gonna mix this brown and the black with an eyeliner brush and just use that to do a little mini wing and define the lashes. I've gotten a lot of fallout with that gold shadow. I don't even know how, because I pressed it in so lightly with my finger, but it's like all under my eye. 
like a lot of fallout, a lot of fallout from this um, black and brown as well. And I am tapping it off. <laughs> so be warned, be warned. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see the fallout, the black dusted? Oh my God all over my eyes no so i'm not having the best time with these deeper shades there's definitely a lot of fallout so if you were to use this palette and doing a deeper look with the deeper shades i would definitely say to do the eyes before your base because i feel like i just rubbed away my entire under eye <laughs> i'm just taking a little bit of that biscuit shade on the inner corner and then i think i want to just go back into that mario makeup by mario skin perfector i keep just wanting to say bronzer skin perfector and just pat that on top in the inner corners I feel like we had such a nice light like summery makeup going on and then it just took a deep glam turn real quick real quick <laughs> but that's okay let's go ahead and use the rem beauty volumizing mascara the packaging of this is so fun Ooh, don't mind my sweaty hands all over that i think the wand looks really interesting it has like these little cutouts very fun smells like mascara let's give it a go so they had this volumizing mascara and then there was also a lengthening mascara. Okay, so with those little gaps in the wand, what I'm experiencing thus far is that I'm applying most of it with this point because it, I mean, it literally does just leave gaps. So I'm like applying it, but then I'm going back over with the tip to like go back in where the gap is on the wand. It's kind of a bizarre little feeling. I don't know how I feel about that. Overall, the look of the mascara is really nice. I'm not getting like big chunky sections. Like it's really nice and it's a, like a fluffy volume, which I love. But these little cutouts on the wand just feel kind of bizarre while applying. Like even on the lower lash line, like you see right there, that's where one of the gaps was. Like I have to go back in and like wiggle that around to get product there. I don't know how I feel about that. What do you guys think? That's the mascara applied. Definitely not one of the more voluminous options that I've used. Now to finish up the face, I wanted to actually play with this new shade from Benefit. This is Shelly. It's one of the blushes from the Wanderlust blush collection that they came out with. It's this beautiful like corally pink, looks stunning. It's one of the shades that I haven't tried yet. So I wanted to take her for a whirl today. These blushes are super pigmented. So if you want to start small and just do a little light dusting, you can just take some off on your hand. That's really pretty. It's got a nice little glow running through it. Mmm, very, very pretty. Now that we've finished the makeup, I'm just gonna <laughs> tap off some of this product on my lips because I feel like we need a little bit of a, a deeper lip. That light summery lip was like nice for the whole bronzy feel, but I feel like I need a little bit more definition. So I'm gonna take my Victoria Beckham 02 lip definer. And then I wanted to use one of the Jaclyn liquid lipsticks that I picked up. This one's in the shade Get Real. Smells really good. You know what it actually reminds me of? Oh my God, it reminds me of the smell of the Ofra liquid lipsticks. Oh my gosh, I used to be crazy about those. Do you guys remember Ofra? Wow. I haven't used one of their products in years, but that's what it kind of smells like. It's a little bit more peachy than I was thinking. Honestly, I thought it would be a little bit more pink. I'm just gonna press that around my lip. Really pretty, really, really soft. And you could totally leave the lip here if you wanted it to be matte, but I had picked up that L'Oreal Glow Paradise lip and cheek tint, and I actually swatched this on the back of my hand, and I wasn't really sure about how I felt about that for cheeks. It's like quite a glossy lip formula to me, and it also stains. Like when you apply this onto the skin, I tried to wipe it off after, and it does leave a little bit of a stain. So I feel like this is a product that I would enjoy more on the lips and not so much the cheeks. So I thought we could just take that nice little pinky hue and pat it on top of the lips for a little bit of a glow instead of putting it on the cheeks because I just I don't know how I feel about that formula for the cheeky cheeks but you can see it leaves like quite a stain especially on my finger <laughs> so again for like a no makeup makeup day I think that would be a really pretty little lip tint option but I think it just adds that little hint of pink that we needed for the lips to kind of go with the blush I'll do one final little spritz of my benefit professional 
And then this is the finished makeup look. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think about some of the new products that I have picked up and used on my face today? There's a few that I'm like really excited about. I'm really excited to have this little combo, this little duo for the summer. I'm a little bit on the fence about the eyeshadow. I experienced a lot of fallout and we had some really patchy moments. So I'm just gonna have to keep playing, see how this one wears by itself. And then I'm really curious to hear your guys' thoughts on the eyeshadow palette. The mascara for sure was a little bit of an experience. And then we've also got some really lovely lip options here. So thanks so much for hanging out with me, you guys, today as we played with some new makeup. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you all very, very soon for a new video. Bye!